So when I give a uh, asked to give a talk title, I I, I I haven't thought about what I'm gonna talk about, so I give a very generic talk. So today I'm gonna actually talk focus on some recent studies we have been doing for in situ structural determination and then to reach a um, quite decent and resolution. The story I'm gonna present today. There are two stories I'm going to present today. So one's a SARS-CoV-2 infection on the spike protein in the virus itself, as well as the spike protein structures on the vaccine, uh, vaccine candidate. And another story I want to present to you is the alpha carbos, uh, the rubisco molecules in the alpha carbosome in the impact native carbo, alpha carbosomes. Um, because this is, as this is the instruct meeting, and uh, I want to just uh, take this opportunity to show um, what we have in EBIC, EBIC is a part of our instruct, infrastructure, and then we open to a free for scientific community to gain access to uh, the instruments as well as uh, uh, expertise <coughs> in cryo EM, cryo ET, and uh, this we have, we take all, so this is EBIC, uh, we look at, at the diamond light source, the so code localizer with uh, a beam line called I-14 as well as a physical sense called EPSEC. And I just want to mention that we are currently open recruiting for group, leader, group leader and scientific leader and senior scientists for positions in QuailM software development. In EBIT, we take all kinds of samples. Um, we accept purified protein samples, uh, purified virus, virus preps, as well as uh, you know, you know, cells grow on EM grids and microcrystals for microED. So yesterday, um, the talk about um, proteins Micro protein crystals, so you can talk to us and uh, try to do macro electron diffraction that we establish in EBIT. So, those, those samples we do all cryo, of course, we go into uh, freezing, vitrification, and uh, the uh, data collection. So, then we have a different type of uh, results. They are single particle, we, we prove, uh, routinely do uh, uh, the commissioning uh, test max scopes when they go to upgrade to 1.5 astron resolution. For um, molecular tomography, uh, uh, this is the gag molecule to two point density resolution and also in situ structure analysis. As I mentioned, we do macro EV for small molecule as well as the pro uh, protein crystals. Uh, we also have other instruments in place. Uh, this is a cryofibrillation machine and a, a cryocorrhythm cryoclamp uh, for cryoclamp microscopy and for the making lamella. This uh, fib, we also have a fib machine to make a slice view through the cross um, fibrosin volume um, of the entire cells uh, in situ. Okay, so um, so I, um, we do a lot of uh, um, single particle the micro ED, and uh, today I will like to focus on uh, this subject uh, called um, cryo electron tomography and the subtomogram averaging. Um, why with um, cryo ET? Um, yesterday, uh, Julia has uh, um, explained a little bit about uh, what is the cryo electron tomography and the subtomogram averaging. Uh, this is uh, very useful for in situ structure determination. And uh, why we do this is because uh, we can study uh, proteins and the complex in uh, their native structure in the native environment. Uh, there and also multiple different conformations in the, within the native cell during the cellular process. It also allows us, uh, Julia has mentioned that, allows us to take individual protein particles or complexes in the cell, um, the structures that we determine, map it back into the tomograms to look, have a spatial distribution of different protein conformations, uh, how they distribute along um, in the cellular volume, as well as uh, how these different protein components, uh, with, say, involving in a cellular pathway or signaling pathway, how they connect the physically, uh, uh, physically connected with each other and how they distribute against each other. And uh, this method also allows us to bring other um, data um, to correlate and interrogate with other data, such as uh, fluorescence data, mass spectral, mass spectral <laughs> trotometry, just mentioned in the previous talk. So I think this is a really great uh, tool, versatile and a very powerful in vivo tool uh, uh, to, determine, to analyze the structure in situ. So um, we, in order to achieve high resolution for in you know, quality STA, uh, subatomic averaging, should for um, subatomic averaging, we, a few years ago, my graduate student, Benheim, has developed a software called EM Clarity. 
and this is allow us to achieve a high resolution uh, for several technology. Now, this software, of course, is like, uh, along with uh, along with the Lulan for you heard yesterday, and uh, um, also there are a number of other softwares like uh, WarpM and Python um, AD3. All these softwares allows you to um, for structural analysis uh, in situ for um, for high resolution. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to focus on today's topic on two, two um, books of today's presentation on two topics. One is a SARS-CoV-2 infection, focused on spike structure and spike structure in vaccine. And the second topic is uh, uh, the rubisco in native uh, impact Africa boxes, one of them. So you heard yesterday uh, that due to COVID and many how world is involved, probably involved in COVID research. There's over 900 structures for, um, for spike plot. I'm sorry, it's, oh uh, yeah. So there are spike, uh, those are mostly are purified, isolated purified spike protein along or bound to the antibody or bound to the receptor. There are also um, written structures from um, various particles uh, Spike protein on virus particles by John Burke and Martin Beck and Sally in China. And we also um, did uh, from uh, purified virus particle inactivated. We also did uh, uh, purified virus particle but inactivated in a different way using um, beta purpure lactone instead of using um, purple aldehyde. And uh, there, there, those in, in situ structure studies show that uh, on the spec there are pre-fusion uh, pre specs but as well as the post-fusion specs. Although there's a small fraction in this uh, uh, um, prior order by fixed samples, inactivated samples, so we found uh, this is actually uh, the same method used for signal back vaccine, we found the majority of the specs uh, are post-fusion, only a uh, quarter of the specs are pre-fusion. So there's a certainly, um, this is not what we really want um, to have as a vaccine candidate, although the vaccine works quite well, not as effective as the other candidate, uh, like an mRNA candidate, but still works. Now, we were wondering what's going on, whether what's, what does the really virus look like inside, as just being assembled and buried off. So we decided to do in-cell, uh, in-situ structural analysis for, for the infection process. So we are focusing on the infection process and on the latest stage of infection, uh, 24 hours post-infection, and we study RNA synthesis, virus assembly, egress, and the release the sample. But today I will focus on the spike uh, part of it um, as it assembles uh, in this site. So we um, um, we use uh, 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 EM grids to grow the culture, uh, um, virus six uh, cells. Uh, grow on EM grids and uh, mm, in fact with uh, uh, the original UK strain uh, SARS-CoV-2, this is all um, operated in CL3's lab. Then we uh, uh, parable using 4% of parable aldehyde exit for an hour and uh, taking out from CL3 lab. So this is what you see a grid scheme uh, look like uh, for um, the cells grow on EM grids and in fact with virus. If you look closely here, you can see those uh, markers, those uh, uh, positions that has been screened for, uh, for um, and, and being uh, taken image from. And uh, you see many places, other places can be taken many images, and other places uh, only uh, one image. So that indicates that this is a, a, a virus, part, uh, this is a cell that has been infected, and those uh, we ignore that we don't see virus particles. We have to do this because we don't have a fluorescence pack virus. We have to use EM to do correlation. So using EM to screen for infected cells, then taking those, in, uh, you will see what infected cells look like. For example, this cell, this is what LOMAC look like, atlas, and you see those rough membranes along the cell. And if you zoom in closer, you can see those rough membranes full of virus particles, a little bit, little bit. Those little guys are all SARS-CoV-2 virus particles, four of them. Just so we take this information and go into the fifth cell machine. So this is how we do correlation because we don't have fluorescence signal in on the virus particle. So we mark those cell, uh, cells that are full of uh, we know full of virus particles. It's also circled in red. And then we do cryofib. We do two ways. We do cryofib sim to do volume imaging of the entire cell for those infected cells. And we also take a, um, use a 12 to make a very, very thin cell lamella. 
and the image is um, the infection process with this very similar matter. I just show a clip that I uh, taken from the website, yeah, some official website, how we do cryofibrillation. You see there's a two beam, electron beam and a, a SE beam, the ion beam, and then we place a window around the cell here, and you see the two beams, the ion, uh, the beams, ion beam going to go, milling away the SS material, and the left are very, very thin lamella that internally and um, from this internal cells, intracellular space. And uh, this uh, milling process, uh, as I said, you can also do slice and build, slice and build to build the entire, this destructive method but allows you to build the entire cell volume uh, that is uh, very, uh, in using native contrast. So um, I, this, view, this video is going to show you the slice view method that are going through the cell, that uh, what does in fact the cell look like. So you will see this is the, those little particles are all SARS-CoV-2 viruses and the membranes are start protruding in the control cells, so they are very smooth long and then you see numerous vesicles uh, produced in the cell and then later you will hear from this uh, uh, the uh, uh, double membrane vesicles and the borders from uh, Montserrat and uh, Nexco. So we, uh, this is a segmented volume from a segmented uh, segmentation of the value you can see uh, these numerous vesicles are in blue here. It's being uh, uh, induced by SARS-CoV interaction, and all those red particles are sars virus particles. Now we move on to intracellular into the cellular lamella, and uh, what do you see? This is a moving slicing through very thin lamella from cell. This is where the bar you see nuclear nuclear membrane, nuclear pores, and this is the site where we capture that SARS-CoV two just being produced and assembled and burned into. We call it those single membrane vesicle. You can see there's a virus particle here, and another particle just being assembled here. You see the spike aggregation of spikes, and then um, there's another one probably uh, assembly process. This is halfway burning. The another post just starting the process. And you see also those are called the mem double membrane vesicles. You will hear more about next talk um, in the next talk. Those has portals that uh, is exports mRNA and RNA genomes so, uh, from those vesicles. Just to look uh, look closely here, you see those are portals. This is the assembly set. You see spike uh, aggregation uh, on the side, and uh, otherwise they are randomly distributed. And another side here now. And I mentioned that this is a portal here, and uh, this is a work by Montessor. Mont mm. So we we take those uh, um, virus particles, the spikes in the internal, just to be broken into internal vesicle. Those spikes um, spikes from native virus particles. So we determine uh, the uh, structure to a certain resolution because of limit by the limit limit number of spikes we have. Uh, and uh, this is uh, most, it's uh, all pre-fusion, there's no post-fusion spikes. We also um, be able to just uh, determine spikes from the virus particle just exit the cell, uh, extracellular space, lining next to cell membrane, we get a 10 angstrom resolution, and uh, you can tell that two spikes look very similar. There's uh, no significant change between the intracellular spikes to outside, and uh, there's no post-fusion spikes there. Of, uh, and we also wonder whether you know we use the spikes be using for vaccine cat development. We're working team that with the Oxford, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine team to look at the vaccine, how the vaccine uh, spike look like. So I show you this next uh, movie showing that the cells are being transduced by the vaccine vector, uh, Chadox vector, and look at this. Uh, we help them to look at the, the spike formation and the uh, uh, spike structure. At the, vet, um, at the cell surface that the cells are being uh, expressed for by the vaccine, transduced by the vaccine vet. So uh, you can see those uh, spikes are entirely cover the cell surface. They are lo almost look like a hedgerows in the uh, UK countryside, you know, between the farms, so you see the rows of hedges are just very, very evenly distributed around and uh, entirely covered the cell surface. Amazing. And then you see mostly pre-fusion spikes, no post-fusion spikes, which is really good to us, uh, good news to us. Uh, we take those spikes again to quality subatomic gram averaging. You can see here, this is uh, initially we do threefold symmetry, we get an uh, uh, intermediate resolution with a, a threefold symmetry. Then we want to look at the spike conformation because that has uh, this RPG domain up or down or, or all up or one up or two up. So we don't, um, 
Then did the symmetry expansion just uh, to look at the spike in each uh, three uh, among three molecules. And then we end up with three different classes here. So this is a class, the majority class is one up. And there's a class with all three RBD down. And there's a class that this one RBD actually is not resolved. The two RBDs are down because these RBDs are very, very flexible. Uh, we test this um, help vaccine can uh, test two vaccine candidates, one called the HEX. Um, HEX uh, is a six proline stabilized spike, uh, spike construct, the other one's not. And uh, you can see the distribution of different conformation within these two candidates. The stabilized um, construct, you have the majority, really majority of one RPDB, which is uh, most relevant to, the, uh, to antibody binding and the vaccine, the, um, vaccine if efficacy. Well, the, um, the other one also works quite well, but not as good as uh, the stabilized version. Mm -hmm. And uh, we take this, um, this uh, major population, one after the other, and further determine the structure to either answer resolution. You can see those individual alpha helices really well. And this is the RBD domain that's just sticking up and ready for binding antibody. Okay, so I'm going to switch again to the second topic, which is uh, the uh, rubisco structure and the distribution within the intact native alpha carbosidone. This work was done by Nito Atera Postal, who is uh, now moving on to PI position, uh, leaving lab next month. <laughs> uh, so, this is a, uh, so rubisco is the most abundant protein on Earth and um, responsible, responsible for carbon fixation. And the um, one type of alpha carbosome that contains rubisco within the macro environment, called uh, macro environment like this. So the alpha carbosomes are made of a shell protein. It has um, the two proteins that makes a hexamer, and then this another shell protein makes a hexamer, and um, it makes a polyhedral shell inside. In, uh, it encloses a rubisco and uh, a carbon anhydrase. The rubisco is uh, made of two subunits, larger and a small subunit, as shown you here. And uh, there's another protein I want to mention here called the CSL, uh, CSLS2. This is an um, uh, intrinsically disordered protein. And uh, there's uh, only the C-terminal uh, part of a few fragments, a peptide with no bands to the shell protein over here. And uh, the N-terminal peptide uh, fragments bands to rubisco. So basically, this protein, one end attaches to the shell, the other end attends to rubisco, and then, uh, organizes the rubisco within the alpha carbosome. So we, um, in collaboration with Lu Ning Liu in um, Liverpool, so we uh, got the uh, purified alpha, um, isolated alpha carbosome uh, samples. So we did uh, tomography. You see the slicing through these tomograms. You can see already rubisco organized in an inter interesting way. So there are strings within this alpha carbosome, and there are also um, uh, uh, dispersed particles within. So we use the EM clarity template matching, take the atomic structure of rubisco and to match those particles within the alpha carbosome. You can see here, those are position of rubiscos being template matched. And you can already see the spiral organization of those uh, rubiscos making spiral strings within, within the alpha carbosome. Now we can take those individual rubiscos and analyze, uh, align them in 3D, get a 3D structure, which are really uh, amazing, uh, very exciting. We got a 3.3 astral resolution, and it really allows us to see it's coming off. really allow us to see all the side chains uh, and, uh, um, within the uh, rubisco. So I just uh, just flashing through these uh, densities and with uh, the uh, actual real space uh, uh, refined model here. Um, just to show the quality of the map, you can see all the side chains are very well resolved. This is a large, uh, this large subunit and small subunit you can see really well. This is the active side, you see histidines and analyzes the co uh, this coordination for active site, and this indicates this rubisco in this uh, uh, isolated alpha systems in active, in active state. So another thing we can do is taking all the individual particles and map that into the original tomogram shown here, and then you get not only the position of this uh, um, uh, rubiscos within an uh, intact alpha carbosome, but also the orientations and how they are organized. So this map back, um, 
we take all the when we take all the rubiscos, uh, we get this structure, and there's a um, just a rubisco structure. We were wondering whether we know there are individual structures that are uh, a complex with the rubisco crystal structure with the CSL2 fragment uh, bond, and that they are sits, supposed to be sitting in this group here, but we don't see CSLS2. Uh, what is happening? CSS2 is supposed to has a one end to the shell and another end to the rubisco. Then we start analyzing the subpopulation of the rubisco within the alpha carbosome. So we first, um, uh, the color doesn't show, I cannot see color very well, but the suppose a shell of, a, um, uh, uh, indicating a shell, we are taking all the rubiscos from the outer shell, outer layer, and then do subatomic averaging. And then long the all, we, it was really surprising to see, we see this peptide from CSLS2, and it sits right at the group, just as indicated by the crystal structure right there. Uh, and that uh, CSLS2 bond to the rubisco. But when we analyze this in the, in the rubisco, um, within the upper carbosome, we don't see any density of a CSLS2. So the CSLS2 only organizes the outshell of the, um, um, outshell of the rubisco within carbosome, but not the inner shell. Inner shell, those rubiscos are organized in a spiral array themselves. And how, so we are curious about how these rubiscos are organized in the spiral array within, within the upper carbosome themselves without CSL2. So we look at the, this is the each, the spiral array from a single upper carbosome. You see um, a sing, as one string of rubisco is uh, nearly all surrounded by six strings of rubisco that they go into the spiral array uh, against each other. Is that right? Now we can take those uh, uh, strings, rubisco strings, and uh, analyze what the interaction involved in organizing them. So we take a diamond rubisco here and uh, determine the structure of this rubisco diamond at four angstrom resolution. Then we can look at uh, what is the interface, what makes the rubisco interact with each other. So this is, uh, uh, interface is mediated by the only just small subunit of rubisco here and uh, interaces all charge charge interaction. Um, you can see um, the charge complementaries between the two alpha, uh, two, two, uh, two rubiscos against each other. Now, um, there's a crystal structure I mentioned uh, with of rubisco, there are crystal arrays, and then we can analyze the, uh, the uh, lattice, uh, lattice contact or crystal, crystal contact. Compare this interface to the crystal contact, which one is colored in, uh, with, uh, from cryo ET and uh, the gray one is from crystal. You can clearly see there's a twist between the two rubisco molecules compared to crystal. Crystal is straight up, and this one has a, a twist, seven, de a seven degree twist. This allows the rubisco, this twist allows the rubisco to assemble this uh, spiral array against each other, as you can see here. So we map all the rubiscos back into the carbosome. That's what we find. So you have these rubiscos, uh, Center, in the center, they form spiral arrays and they are dispersed along, uh, in the out, out layer of uh, uh, out layer of alpha carbosome, and those rubiscos are having the CSLs to bond and organize. So with this, I would like to end um, with uh, uh, this is just a picture here. So we we are um, I think in the future the in situ structure doing a structure and uh, uh, different conformation different protein uh, connections, pathways, uh, it really has great power and potential uh, from the, just the cells or even tissues to, uh, using uh, correlate with the light microscopy and uh, uh, as well as the cryofluorescence using fib fib fibsim to do the 3D volume as well as the similar matter to gain the inside information uh, of a protein, the protein complex involved in actively involved in signaling pathway or in the cellular process. So with this, I'd like to thank all people actually involved. Uh, really, uh, they are the driving force for those pro two pro uh, projects. The two uh, posts I mentioned, Tony and uh, Luisa, they, they, the two leading uh, scientists for the project I presented, they both are moving on to their independent position. Uh, I have uh, many, many wonderful collaborators uh, down school in Oxford for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, virus uh, uh, infection work. Uh, SDFC for the fibrosin volume imaging, 
uh, General Institute for the Vaccine Development and uh, SARS CoV 2 vaccine, and um, many EDIC staffs are involved in those imaging data acquisition, Liverpool Looney News Lab for the Alpha Cabazosome. So, with this, uh, I'd like to take questions. Thank you.